Hi, I'm Sung Ray. I'm something else. Here at Black Girl Soul, a podcast where we discuss the Asian dramas we love from a Black female perspective. We are looking to be entertained, to learn about other cultures, and share our passion for these shows. Welcome. Hello, everyone. This is Black Girl Soul with something else and... So Ray. So today, finally, happily, we get to discuss a great, fabulous, wonderful, you get the idea that I like this movie, <laughs> called <laughs> Face Sweepers. <laughs> I'm saying it all slow. Called Space Sweepers on Netflix. Okay, I'm going to let Sung Ray go first. <laughs> go for it, Sung Ray. Alrighty, so Space Sweepers featuring Song Joon Ki and Kim Tae Ri. Now Song Joon Ki is the guy who's the driver for the ship, and then Kim Tae Ri is captain. Uh, he's a pilot. I'm sorry, I said driver. I'm just a little off. I love this movie. This movie was good. This movie was long. Now let me put that out there first. This movie was long, but you didn't even notice it because they just kept the pace going, kept the action happening, kept the stuff, you know, moving. It wasn't so action packed. You felt like it was over the top. It wasn't so slow in any space that you felt like, you know, could they please speed this up? Like they just kept it going. And the story was a really good story. And one that you, you know, could feel, I don't know, involved and be in. I also love, 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 loved that it was so multicultural. You're talking in terms of future. So this is set in 2092, I think, is our date. They speak in terms of, you know, all cultures being involved in this space age and where we're going and what things are happening. Um, I'm not going to tell you the story just yet. I'm giving you my overview. But just in my overview, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed watching it. And I give this like a 9.5. Like I can't find too much that I think was wrong with this. 9.5 for me out of 10, out of 10. So what about you? Something else? How'd you feel about this overall? Right. I feel the same. I feel like that's a 9.5. Like the only 0.5 for me is that they didn't build in a sequel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me start off by saying this. I come from the history of watching action adventure films like Back to the Future, The Goonies, The Last Starfighter, E.T., Solar Babies. This film was along those lines. Like I'm a kid really, really of the 1980s. And so, and I grew up watching older films like this. So this was totally my crack. It had all the elements. And I think that there have been a lot of films that have tried in recent years to tap into the same fun, the same sci-fi, the same elements with very mixed results. Sometimes, especially with these Marvel films, I came out of the film feeling empty because they were checking off boxes, but they really weren't giving you the right mix. They weren't giving you enough character. They weren't giving you enough story. It, it wasn't the right mix. So you felt like you were on a ride, but when you got off the ride, you were like, my insides are shaking a little bit, but I'm not really touched. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's why at least the first Guardians of the Galaxy got people because it was hearkening back to the old movies. Like, we shouldn't have to get a Steven Spielberg to make a movie in order to get this feeling. We shouldn't have to expect a Ron Howard to make a film for us to get this feeling. So when I watched this, I didn't have a lot of expectations. I was just like, oh, okay, I think this will be cute. Like I thought, I always like sci-fi. I'm always open to sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, it's sci-fi. And then as I was watching it, I was like, oh my goodness, like, everything is there. You got the archetypes there. You know, you had the warrior, the caregiver, the child. The child was super cute, right? Yes, yes. You have, Dorothy. <laughs> you have like the orphan because in, in their own way, they're all orphans. You got the joker because the robot is the joker. And I want to talk more about that robot later. You got the rebel because they're all rebels. You even have the lover because that like white dude who is checking for the captain oh he was on it he was he was ride or die he was like I'm I'm, I'm ready to die for this chick like <laughs> <laughs> 
so I cannot say enough. Like I'm just tumbling all over myself to talk about how much I love this. So I'm going to let you talk. And so for me, I think, um, you know, sci-fi is one thing, but I am always a big proponent and a lover of space movies, movies about exploring space, being in space, what's happening in space. And so that was my draw. My draw was that, oh, okay, on top of it, just, you know, being a sci-fi, they're talking in terms of space and futuristic space. So yeah, so I would love to see this. I want to see where they're going with this. So I was kind of excited in advance to see the storyline, um, but I wasn't really sure, you know, just based upon what I'm reading. I was like, oh, why the little girl got to be a bomb? Why, you know, you, you just heard little pieces and bits. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue on with this. However, once I got in and got started, it was awesome. I think for me, I want to just start talking in terms of characters, if that's all right with you. You good? Yep. All right. So uh, Tejo is our pilot and Tejo is pretty much who our story is based around because we start off with him and why we got into this situation and why we're dealing in these things. And so I really enjoyed just getting to know him, seeing him move from being this kind of hardened character to having his softer side and, you know, making adjustments and shifts. Kim tae who's Captain Zhang, I really enjoyed her as well. She was someone who they didn't give us a whole lot of story about. They gave us some enough for us to have an understanding about her being the captain and her being a gutsy female. And I love that part, like super, super love that part. But they didn't give us too, too much about her. So like there's a portion in the movie where his his name is CEO James Sullivan, but he's the actor Richard Armitage. Can we just pause for a cause and say, I love that he was able to speak English and his English was good English. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, they do. They, they knew they had to come correct. And I think it's almost like a running joke in certain circles, maybe our circles of people who watch, but maybe they're getting the memo that they're like, we can't find some German person who's speaking English as a second language just because they white and male and tall to come up in here and speak English. And, and come on, how easy is it? There are like so many... <laughs> So many, so many well, people who speak English correctly. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. If these are the only people who are trying out for these parts, like I've tried to place myself in a bunch of different spaces to understand how do they get to this? But that's where I'm going. Okay. Are they applying for these positions? Are these the only ones who are like the certified actors? Like maybe they have an actor's guild. I don't know. But we always see, oh boy, um, his name is Daniel Joey Albright, the one who was the reporter at the beginning. Yes. Right. Yes. Him. We see him in yes. all kinds of dramas. He's the, yeah, he all right. Like, you know, you don't think he's the greatest actor in the world, but he's okay and he'll do. You know what I'm saying? But I and, think and they did a great job with clear. Richard. Right. Let's be clear. If he were anywhere for South Korea, his career would be okay. Maybe he would have curved it one way versus the other. But yeah, you see him constantly. And it's because he's in South Korea. Like sometimes I think that a younger me with some tweaks here and there, I go to South Korea, I'd be like, hey, I'm a black person and I speak a little bit of Korean. Yay. I would, I would big up for two seconds before they'd be like, okay, she an average black shit. But, <laughs> but, but, but I think that's what's going on with him. He was like, let me work my, my hustle. Let me go to South Korea or some Asian country and make this happen. So I'm sorry. Go on. No, no you're fine. I just no disrespect like, to him. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but I, I totally agree. And that's what I was saying. You know, like maybe he's part of a, a actor's guild that has allowed him these opportunities where others who might be better English speakers didn't get these jobs or people who might be better actors didn't get these jobs. But I think this guy, Richard Armitage, did a good job in his role. He was very, very convincing because Jesus, I began to hate him somewhere in the middle of this movie. Well, well okay, <laughs> let me ask a question because this is what I miss. And I know it was in there. Number one, why did he hate humans so damn much? And number two, what the hell was going on with his body? Yeah, so that they didn't explain. I look oh spoilers y'all we may go into spoiler world so let me just let you know now but um yeah please explain ma'am I was just gonna say with his body because at one point I even thought that he was eating humans to stay because remember he's old he said he was over 100 years old 180 I want to say I can't even remember the exact yeah number. 150 100 something yeah and so do you remember when they he killed the man it it was the reporter he killed the reporter on the wall and I thought like okay is he eating him is he getting his blood like is something happening with him in order for him to stay alive he has to do this to other humans but 
that wasn't even it. Like, I don't know what the hell they didn't fully explain that part out. And honestly, I feel like they did leave just a taste of room where we could have a part two. I hope so. I just, I just feel like there could be. So whatever was going on with that dude, that even though he might have died, that technology didn't die. And what was he doing and how was it happening? That's something we could like go off into another world with and discuss and kind of talk about also his history. I think that they mentioned him having a family. Right. They did. Remember. They but did. I forget what happened with the family. Like for real, I only watched it one and a half times. I watched yeah. it one full time and then I kind of went through it skimmed through the second yeah. time. So yeah, see, that's why you have to watch it like two times. This is the kind of movie you really can watch it twice. Like you think it's a simple movie, but like Song Ray said, I would have to look up how long the movie was, but I kid you not in the middle of the movie, I was like, this is a long ass movie, ain't it? And <laughs> I rarely watch movies or TV shows more than once. So it speaks to how cool it was. I just didn't have time to fully watch it a second time because a chick is busy. But please go on, Song Ray. Um, also on their ship, we have Tiger, who's played by Jin Sun Q. And he's the one that had the tattoos and the... I think he was a gangster, mm-hmm. he said, in his past. Like when they were talking yes, about his past. like sex day. Yeah, so yeah. him. And he was sexy, not because of the locks. Like, I used to ride for locks a whole lot. Song Rae knows how it is. But he was cute. And Song Rae may talk about the lock issue, too. Go well, on, no, because for me, like, I, I was sharing with something else that at the beginning when I was seeing previews, I was like, oh, Jesus, here we go with the locks again. Hope this doesn't turn into a Backstreet Rookie situation. However, I was very, very happy with how they did it because No, it didn't. He wasn't trying to put on any airs, have a accent of any sort. He was just himself. He was just, this was who he was and how he wore his hair. And it is what it is, you know, because again, I think we stated this before hairstyles don't necessarily make you who you are. There's no hairstyle that I feel like is that's a black hairstyle. That's an Asian hairstyle. That's a white hairstyle. I don't feel that way, but I do feel like when you put on an air behind it, or when you're putting on as though you're wearing a costume, there's a problem then. So for him, I just felt like his character that just lended itself to who his character was. Also, he was the sweetest one. Oh my gosh. Cause he fell for Dorothy immediately when she came in. So I thought that was so cool. Um, Bubs. Oh my God. I love Bubs. Bubs was the right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I was going to say, let me go back to Tiger Park for a second. And let me just say that I so, so, so one, I thought he was super sexy. Like, (laughs) Um, but also I think it's because he was like that warrior slash caregiver that I mentioned earlier. Like, I love that there was a softer side to him. Mm -hmm. I love that they allowed the characters for the most part to have some depth to them. Even Captain Jang, you find out that she is on some mission to kill James Sullivan. Like she is ride or die for it. Do I understand like the whole history of why she's like that? No. And that's what a sequel could do for us. Right. Mm -hmm. But I knew that she did some stuff that maybe she shouldn't have done. Anyway, I'm not, I'm trying to not completely spoil. I am trying to, because this is really worth watching. Like you all listening to us and then watching versus after the fact, all of us geeking out. So I'll just say that Back to Tiger Park, I so applauded just the depth of his character. Now, Bubs, you talk about Bubs, then I'll talk about Bubs. Please. I thought Bubs was so cool. He's the the android AI, the robot that's on the ship, and it's voiced by Yu Hei Jin. And I just love the character. The character was funny. He had all the the jokes, the mannerisms they gave to him. Like I just enjoyed his character quite a quite immensely. And he and Dorothy are also known as not men, not not Nim, Kat Nim. She and it were good friends, and they, you know, he made her up read to her like they just enjoyed each other and so one of the things I loved and I'm not going to tell you the whole spoiler but one of the things I loved was the change that uh Bubs took at the end because I thought that was so cool but go ahead right and I'm going to speak to the change up to a point um because it's an obvious thing uh when you watch a lot of sci-fi that robots are one way trying to become something else 
bulbs was so transformative in a number of ways, you know, because when you first see bubs, you think smart alecky robot. Then when bubs is dealing with Dorothy, you see a different side of bubs. And I love that they did that. You know, that was one of the things I really enjoyed about that, that character. Um, and finally, just Dorothy. I think Dorothy, not Cottonem, sorry. Cottonem, I think her role in all of this and the way that she was even being sought after by James Sullivan's character, I think she was really a integral part in the story, in the storytelling, because one, she helped to bring that, that whole entire crew to another level like they were already in one space she helped bring them to another level and then even the way that they had used her and tried to create her into this thing as opposed to being a, a little girl into this thing to be used for the purposes of destroying earth like even in that i was like wow she she was a special little girl like there's no other way to put it she was a special little girl and i think her storytelling and what they did with her was really cool i enjoyed meeting her father learning about how she came to be learning about why she was so important to them and just her being a little girl and doing what little girls do the whole thing was really cool I enjoyed it yeah I mean they had two little girls in this and I thought that both played their roles very well I know it sounds weird but it's like I almost don't have like an opinion other than she was like a cutie patootie okay. and she did her job well <laughs> And if they have a sequel, it'd be interesting to see how her character transforms, right? Because there's a lot going on with her. <laughs> so, yeah. So it would be interesting, you know, like if I were to dream up a sequel, because you know, I like to dream a little dream. <laughs> I can see her as maybe a preteen at this point and they have to save her again or something interesting happens or she not becomes a bad figure but like maybe something maybe she's doing her own quest because this was very much a quest kind of movie maybe she's going her own quest and she drags them along that would be interesting so uh, the sky's the limit for what they could do yeah but, i think they there's a lot of places they could go with this but I will ask this question or I'll make the statement and ask this question. So I went to Rotten Tomatoes because I was just wondering like, what do other people say about this show? Cause you know, it's one thing to love a show and it's quite another thing <laughs> for other people to love the show. And if I can find it, yes. Um, the film got a 54% among critics and it got an 83%. That was an audience approval rating in Rotten Tomatoes. And the primary criticism of the show was that it was chock full of overused tropes and it wasn't that original. Mm -hmm. And I had to laugh because I'm like, we are living in the age of Marvel and Star Wars and y'all trying to worry about overused tropes. I was like, come again. <laughs> and <laughs> mind you, Marvel and Star Wars are putting out shows with all kinds of bells and whistles, no character development, no heart. They be cheating left and right because they borrow from comic books and from canon, but they don't really explain anything. They just be having you on this roller coaster. So I'm like, okay, how are you going to even compare this one? I don't know. I just felt like I'm just not giving a damn about critics. I don't give a damn about the Golden Globes because of how they did Lovecraft Country and I May Destroy You. As an aside, I think Lovecraft got one award or whatever, or one nomination, and then I May Destroy You got nothing. I spit on critics. I spit on um, awards shows. So I don't really give a damn because <laughs> a, a movie like this is action sci-fi films like they get no love they just don't get any love so I don't care but I did notice because I wondered more actually about the audience approval rating and I just wanted to have an understanding have a clue. And I'm sorry before you go mm -hmm, on you, please. you're spitting on things <laughs> that I do I get it where like, you're almost where you're Italian going. style that's why I'm huh? like, wait a minute, where where are you pulling this from? Go ahead. You know the Italian spit. I do, I do. To the side. 
she's making fun of me y'all no That's i what really she's doing. am not what i'm laughing at is i'm going wow so you are really angry anytime you're talking about you spitting on stuff like i'm going damn right. i spit on right the, I spit on like right. whoa we're spitting on stuff i'm about to take out the two fingers of seely and point them Ooh. at all these what did what did seely say until you, you do right of, yeah, by me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Everything you think about is going to crumble. Yes. But right, right, right. Let, let the black come forward. Okay. Like It's like I have the picture of in my head, but sometimes I forget the words. Another great film. Mm. Did it ever get any awards? There I you go. think, yes, it did. Because Steven No, Spiel- did it get any major awards? Oh, yeah. Uh, who are you? I- Back in the day, racism, y'all. Yeah, I'm sure it got something somewhere somehow because it was all kinds of brilliant. Like top movie of the world between that Shawshank Redemption there are a handful but um and and that brings me to something else so when I look at action films and when I look at sci-fi films I do not judge them the same way that I judge uh Color Purple for example or The Departed or Citizen Kane those are different levels when it comes to an action film just to keep it a hundred because I am expecting a different level of physicality from the actors, and my preference is that they do their stunts. So that's why I like the Born Identity. That's why I like the Atomic Blonde films. I don't really expect the actors to be super, super on point. I don't even expect the story to be much. I just expect a a sketch of a story. And if the actors, if the main actor goes through the whole movie grunting, I'm okay with that. That's why I like John Wick. <laughs> That's why I like, I like Keanu Reeves, like nobody's business. I'm never going to hate on that man. Even though he has a girlfriend, I don't give a damn because I love him that much. I want him to have love. Okay. If I can't have him, I want him to be happy. Like that's how much I love Keanu Reeves. So I have a different expectation for action films, sci-fi films, slightly higher level because there has to be world building because there's a science fiction element in the storytelling, I give them a little bit of a pass. I don't expect the same thing that I would expect from like a thriller or something that has to be way more cerebral. So I give a little bit more when it comes to something like that. I come from the school of loving shows like Star Trek and yeah. The Mandalorian and Firefly and Umbrella Academy, even the watch, I'm trying to like give a shot. So when you meld those two together, when you put action and sci-fi, I will admit what I am looking for in a film first and foremost is to be transported. I'm going to give a little bit when it comes to all the other elements. So as long as they give me enough to hang on so that I like the characters, then I don't mind when it gets to the end and it's all about the shoot 'em ups and the special effects and all the, you know, blow ups and all the action. I don't mind that at that point because you have transported me. I have enough heart. I have enough character development, just enough to like, push it along for me. So let me just admit that. That's where I'm coming from. If you're like, oh, this is a horrible movie and all this stuff. One, I spit on you. I say it, (laughs) you can leave. You don't ever have to come back to us. I need you to unsubscribe in every way possible. I'm done with you. Uh, Pox on you and in your left toe. Okay. Okay. But I just want to admit that (laughs) from the front end, I am giving action sci-fi films a smidge of a pass please go sunray and i think uh personally for me i'm not looking for like because one of the things i either read heard can't really tell you where i got it but people were discussing the concept of like sci-fi being realistic and realistic in that it comes from science because again science fiction so that it comes from a real place in science and you can make it it's backed by something and it makes sense because of what it's backed by um things that can realistically occur so these are the things that they're basing their genre watching off of and what they want to see and so for me personally I 
am hard at having, I, I have a hard time at suspending disbelief. And I think we shared this <laughs> long ago. Like I get frustrated in certain portions of dra- dramas or in certain portions of stories where the obvious should happen. Like you're in the room, you're talking, you left the door open, knowing somebody is trying to hear what you're saying and you just steady talking and then get <gasps> taken aback because they heard you. Stop. You knew this was going to happen. Close the damn door and stop playing with us. <laughs> so <laughs> there are certain portions where, yes, I'm going, ah, why are they doing this? It's so unrealistic or it doesn't make sense. But in right. sci-fi and in science fiction, and in particular this story, I felt like it could happen. Very realistically could happen. I could foresee there being a person like uh, James Sullivan. I could foresee there being a group of people who are trying to stop it. I could foresee them because honestly, just if you're an American mm, mm. and we watching a whole lot of stuff right now happening mm. where people are telling stories that we want to hear per se or not want to hear, but they're giving us their version and pushing forward a narrative that might not necessarily be realistic, but some of us are playing like it's okay. And some of us are acting like it's not. And we got all this in their term. Yeah, okay, exactly. So I can see all of this being a futuristic for us. I can see that. So in my eyes, I feel like this story did an excellent job on execution of a story that was believable, execution on a story that had characters that were likable, relatable, and characters that you could, you know, get caught up into, having not a whole lot of CGI. Yes, there was obviously it had to because we're talking future, but the CGI wasn't enough that it made you go, oh my God, are they serious? Oh yeah, like, no, that their CGI was stellar. Because right. you know how like you'll see someone in the front of a scene and you can feel that the back of it, the like the mm-hmm. actual scene behind them is not like they're not of the scene, they're in front of the scene. No, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Okay. They didn't have that here. It was like smooth. <laughs> I agree. I feel like they did a great job on many, many levels. So again, 9.5 for me. So you know, again, we all have our choices are what we choose to like, dislike. And I do feel like, you know, fine, if you choose to dislike it, that's on you. But please don't base it off of something unrealistic in your disliking. If you're going to, you know, dislike it, dislike it for whatever the case might be. I hate Song Ju Kang. I don't, or Ki, and I don't want to see him in a movie. Fine. Let that be what you say. But when you're talking in terms of what they did do for this movie, I think you got to give them their credit. They did an awesome job. They did an right. awesome job. I- Right. Like you want something fun. You want some characters who you can see as a group. Like you just, you know, like as a family or something, you know, you want, you want to sit down and enjoy yourself and not like be brought down and like too deep with it, you know? And that's why I completely agree with what Sunray is saying. Sunray and I frankly spoke about this, but in a different way yesterday, I had had a conversation with my brother and I was like, one day we going to have to buy land in the ocean. <laughs> because <laughs> we are overrunning the damn planet ain't we <laughs> um because he had read somewhere that we over two or three hundred years or whatever had tripled in size like we went from like one million or so many million to like twice or three times that or whatever and i was like lord we gonna have to jump on boats and do some water world type shit and be up in the ocean and then he was like oh no it's gonna be space and I was like oh yeah it will be space and so that's how it begins humans overrun the planet way down the planet like don't we have Greta running around and Leonardo running around saying stop fucking up the planet like you know it's a thing it is a thing like the the problems we have with our environment are man-made primarily Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it is not out of the way to think that we could overrun the planet and when you think about it realistically do you really think that the middle class folks are going to be the folks going into space first really do you think that do you think that we're the ones who are going to be no disrespect to the impoverished, but the impoverished ain't even playing with the idea that they would be hidden, hidden beyond the clouds, you know? But the middle-class folks, we tend to have expectations. We're like, we work hard. Don't you see our Birkin bag that we paid all our rent money for? <laughs> like, we have an expectation like we would be able to travel into space. So I hate to tell the rest of us the reality of things, but it's going to be the rich, the richy rich, richy riches who are able to do that like the 
the kind of imbalance of social strata that already occurs will be exacerbated when our planet gets worse. So it is, it behooves all of us to try and take care of the thing that we have right now. Do I see space sweepers? No, that looks corny. You know, like when you think about it from one point of view, but on, from another point of view, like Star Trek, I'm riding for Star Trek. I'm not lying, y'all. I'm not lying. I kind of feel it for real. <laughs> So corny, hmm, y'all know. Um, so as we wind down, I think we've, I think that we kind of talked about space sweepers in a roundabout way, but I'm going to give the, uh, the summary. I'm going to do the thing that we should have done in the beginning <laughs> at the end, which is space sweepers is a sci-fi because you didn't say this, right? I did not. Space sweepers is a sci-fi film movie. It's not a film. A film is different. It is a it is a movie, you guys, about a group of face sweepers who work together and they discover a child who brings with her a lot of extra drama because she is being, what is the word? She's being hunted down by both a wealthy CEO and also others who want to use her for their own gain. So the trusty, rusty uh, space sweepers have to decide whether they're going to be heroes or whether they're going to be rich. And they make obvious decisions, but you have to watch it play out because it is hilarious. There's so many little nuggets of cuteness and hilarity. Anything you want to add before we end this, Song Ray? Um, Not on that note. Uh, just in general. So when we return to you guys what we'll be doing and where we are so I thought just a quick recap just as a aside from this since we both just finished watching talked about it um what are you currently watching right now just all over girl I don't know I don't know I don't even know how to pronounce the stuff I'm watching so I'm not even gonna say that game (laughs) okay (laughs) I'm I'm just keeping it real it's like I'm kind of watching this Chinese thing that I'm still trying to figure out um where the woman is in the workplace and, you know, um, she's dating her boss. Like, I think it's a well-known drama, but I, I think it's um, Invisible Life. Ha, ah, sweet. It's called Invisible Life. I cannot tell you what the names of the characters are, or anything like that. But basically, Chick is a brilliant woman, but working in finance. I think I told you all this before. And she's navigating the world while dating her boss and got pregnant by her boss. And it's 40 episodes. So y'all know I'm speed watching. So that's why <laughs> that's why <laughs> it's in and out for me <laughs> because it's not real, real. I'm looking for some other stuff, but I'm trying to lean towards Japanese. The invisible life is Chinese. Okay. Well, for me currently, I'm watching She Would Never Know, uh, I'm watching Marriage Lyric, Marriage featuring, it's got two names, Marriage featuring, or Love featuring Marriage and Divorce, or Marriage oh, Lyrics for shit. Divorce Music. Like, I don't even understand how they came Wait, up what? with that. Yeah, the other title is called Marriage Lyrics for Divorce Music. Any which way, the story hey, is- dude, that's, a smart, that's a smart title, but that, maybe we when we talk about it, if we talk about this, we need to delve into that. Mm-hmm. You said marriage lyrics for divorce music. Mm-hmm. That's deep as hell. <laughs> so that's that's, that's the other think title. Right. Go ahead, no, go ahead. No, good for them. Because think about it. It's like they are making the movement in the language of marriage, but, th- but they are leading themselves. Ultimately, their music is divorce music. True that, all like, of think them. Think about the number of relationships that we've seen where we see people pantomiming a relationship, but it ain't real. Mm-hmm. It's divorce, it's divorce music. Okay, I'm the only one like that. Okay. No, 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 I said, I, I agree. No, I'm listening. I, no. I still have some more to in turn with this show because I just picked it up this weekend and I caught up, but you know, I still got some stuff I just need to stop and process with it. But yeah, I, I hear you. Cause I, in that storyline itself, everybody is in, it's appearing to look like leaning towards divorce. 
Right. I watched it too. I, I forgot about that. See, I told you all, I watched some weird stuff. I don't even know how I watch it. I'm like, oh, I watched that. It's so, <laughs> I ain't right. I ain't right at all. Um, I watched it and like I told some right before, eh, it's just okay. I speed watch it because the lead that you all like, I don't like him at all. Not for real, especially in this. I really don't like him. Um, and it's, it's like his face is beefy and he's supposed to be a hot boy. But what is his name? Something soon. Sung I, I feel him. What is his name? Sung Hyun. Oh, him. No, not feeling him. Not at all. So I'm like, Chick, why'd you marry him? You should have just had sex with him. Kept it moving. Come on now. You can tell what's, what's up with him. No, it's like I like like it. But like I told Sung Ray, or maybe I told you all too, um, I'm only really watching it to see what happens with the wife who didn't keep herself up. Yeah, I think we did talk about it. It's on Twitter and we can talk about it more. I'm up for it because you can see I'm kind of watching it low key, but not interested, but clearly willing to talk about it. (laughs) Okay. You finish us up. So my next one is no matter what, that's the one I told you was the daily. It's 120 episodes. I'm thoroughly enjoying that. I've been talking with um, uh, May, I think her name is on Twitter about it. Um, I'm also watching Busted season one done season two in and moving to season three. Uh, Luca, Mr. Queen finishing that up real secret agent and I started rewatching Secret Garden. I don't know why, but I just did. So what? Secret Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Am I getting Secret Garden wrong? Are you talking about Secret Garden? Old with school. Ho, ho, ho Bin? Hung Bin? With Hung, yeah, Hyung Bin. Girl, mm-hmm. that's my show. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. So him and his track suits, Lord have mercy. Because <laughs> and, and the actress, I forget her name, but she is stellar too. Stellar too. We may have to do one on that one. Just and so, so that's exactly what I was about to ask you. So what are we going to do Girl. next go round? So seeing that I hear you're interested in marriage lyrics for divorce music or marriage featuring love and or love featuring marriage and divorce. We could talk about that as well as Secret Garden. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I, I liked it so much. I even like the soundtrack. Okay. And you know, you're the, <laughs> you're the music person. And let me say this before we end this. With because Sung Ray brought it up with um <laughs> the the paradox of Sung Ray and I. That's what I'm gonna call it. The paradox. Here's the paradox. I'm great at suspending disbelief way more than she can. Mm-hmm. Chick in the middle of a TV show be like, why are they doing that? That don't make any logical sense. I'd be like, damn chick, you're supposed to sp- suspend disbelief. You're supposed to believe that this this guy really is this and this. Come on now. She's horrible at it. Here's the flip side though. She has an unlimited interest in a variety of genres of show. As you can see to my one or two shows, she got five, six deep and they're all different. She will watch a historical drama and then jump to a melodrama, then jump to an action genre. She'll be watching them all at the same damn time, y'all. I can't do all that. I I mean, I watch a lot of American television too and other foreign television and she pretty much sticks to like what Asian television right now. Yeah. So, you know, I'm watching Bob and Avashola on Monday night. She watching like Korean drama number three. So that is true, but she is way more expansive with her interests of genres. So I just want to speak to that because it is hilarious how, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It's just hilarious to me. It's hilarious to me how we are different and how that balances and how that hopefully works for this podcast that you, you get the breadth of interest from her and you get, I don't know what you get from me. I guess that I'm crazy. No, not at all. You (laughs) give depth, you give insight, you dig into areas that I didn't even think about. So yes, we, I think we are a perfect balance for one another in being able to share and talk about dramas and what they offer, what they give dramas, movies, because we've obviously delved into movies too, as well. So, you know, but at any rate, I have enjoyed our show for today. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you listeners. Please make sure you guys listen to us 
wherever it is you listen to your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, Podbean, we're in a myriad of places, as well as we also ask that you please comment, like, and let us know how you feel. Share with us, talk to us, give us some ideas about where you are, what you're watching, and what you guys thought about Space Sweepers if you watched it. Finally, you can see us on any social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're even on Pinterest, you guys, because I just happen to love looking at beautiful things. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, y'all, get, y'all have to follow us on Pinterest. She'd be like, don't, she throws up some fine, fine, ooh, bone chillingly fine men. Do not miss out on Pinterest, y'all. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining Black Girl Soul. I am Song Gray and something else. See you guys later. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Black Girl Soul. We enjoyed having you and please subscribe, like, and follow our Facebook page, YouTube channel, Twitter page, Instagram page, and join our Facebook group. You can also find us on Patreon please look below for links. See you guys next week.